What's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at the all new AMD Radeon RX 6400. Now this was actually released to OEMs in January 2022 and we also had the W6400 for the workstations but we finally got a consumer version known as the RX 6400. So is this going to compete with the RTX 3090? Of course not. Is it even going to compete with the RTX 3060? Probably not. But there's a couple main reasons I'm really interested in this card. First up, the price. For the unit I have here, it was $149 over on Newegg. This is the Swift 105 version from XFX, and it's a single slot, low profile card. We've definitely had some low profile cards on the market for a while now. One of my favorites is the GTX 1650, but at the time of making this video, the low profile version is still around $300 to $350. They're still scalping the low profile version, and it's actually a dual slot low profile, so it won't fit in some of the smaller form factor builds that I like to do. So my next option was the GT 1030. I personally really like this card. We've got two gigs of VRAM, but now we've got a new option with the RX 6400. Like I mentioned, this is coming in at around $150. It's based on RDNA 2, and we've got 4 gigabytes of GDDR6, but it's only running at a 64-bit bus. If we take a look at something like the GTX 1650, that's running at 128, but in synthetic benchmarks, the 6400 is beating out the 1650, at least the non-TI variant of the 1650. So yeah, very sleek little design here, not much to look at. But uh, obviously, it's a low-profile card. It comes with both brackets. And my favorite part, it's a single slot. So this will fit in spots that the GTX 1650 low-profile just won't. We've got two video outputs, full-size display port, full-size HDMI. And when it comes to the specs, it's based on Navi24. So we've got an RDNA2 GPU here, 768 stream processors, 12 compute units, 4 gigabytes of GDDR6, it only pulls around 53 watts, so we don't need any extra power at all. It's got a maximum boost frequency up to 2,321 megahertz, and it actually utilizes PCIe 4.0. If this was a high-end GPU, those specs wouldn't look that impressive, but given the form factor here and the power consumption, I think it's going to be a good little setup, especially for PCs like this. This is an Optiplex 3050. You can pick these up for around $100. You can get them with an i5 or an i7. But unfortunately, a GTX 1650 just won't fit in here. You need a low profile single slot card, and I think that's where the RX 6400 is really going to come in handy for a lot of people who just want to go super budget with it. But I'm really excited to see how this card performs, and in this video, we're going to be testing it in two different PC configurations. First up, I've got a 12th gen i9 setup here. And the motherboard in this machine has PCIe 4.0 slots. Of course, this is a super low-end card to put in a machine like this, but I still want to see exactly what this thing can do without any kind of CPU bottleneck. So I'm going to install it and test in this machine first, and then we're going to move over to something that's more realistic. When it comes to the first test rig, we definitely have an overkill CPU when it comes to this GPU. It's got the 12900K, and I'm overclocked to 5 gigahertz, but I did want to give you a look here. As you can see, Navi24, 6 nanometer, 768 unified shaders, 4 gigabytes of GDDR6, 64 bit. Now that's going to be a big letdown from the 1650 to this little card here. But uh, for the maximum boost, let's go ahead and just see what it does. We'll go to the sensors here 2312, 2309, so 2300 megahertz. Not bad. And real quick, by the way, this card is running in a PCIe 4.0 slot for these first tests. But when we move over to the lower end machine, it's a 3.0 slot. I've already done some testing with it at 1080p, and I'm actually really impressed with this card. So remember, we've got that 12900K. We've got plenty of CPU for basically anything we want to run on this. And I did want to show you about five games here on this rig. Then we're going to swap this out to a lower end budget rig and see how it does in there. First on the list, we have Forza Horizon 5, 1080p, high settings, no resolution scale whatsoever. As you can see, we're getting well over 60. We actually got an average of 72 FPS, and if you need a little more out of it, you can always turn that resolution scale on, and that's really going to help out. But remember, we're working with a budget card here, so your best bet is to just turn V-Sync on and play this game at high all day long. 
Moving over to Cyberpunk 2077, and I kind of wasn't expecting this kind of performance. We're at 1080p, low settings, with Fidelity FX set to quality, and I got an average of 68 FPS out of this game. With the new patches that CD Projekt Red has put out for Cyberpunk, I've actually had really good luck on lower-end GPUs. If you're a regular viewer of the channel, you know I love my integrated GPUs, especially the Radeon GPUs, but this is definitely killing it. Here we have God of War 1080p original settings with Fidelity FX set to quality, and we got an average of 63. From what I've tested so far with these settings, I haven't seen it dip under 60, but there might be a case where it does. But we've still got plenty of settings that we can adjust, so it'll definitely do God of War at 60 FPS. This little card did way better than I thought it would with Halo Infinite. We're at 1080p medium settings, but I did turn resolution scale to 85%, so we're closer to 900p here. I still think it looks really good, and if you did want to do 1080 with it, take the settings down to low. But we're at medium here, and I'm getting an average of 72 FPS out of this game. And of course, I had to test it, still one of my favorite games. GTA 5, 1080p, very high settings. We're getting well over 100 FPS here. Totally playable on the RX 6400. I haven't run into any issues. And by the end, my afterburner stated that I had an average of 116 FPS. Now it's time to move over to something a little more realistic. This is an idea center. I personally really like this little machine. It's got a fourth generation Ryzen 3 4300G. Four cores, eight threads, up to 4.1 gigahertz, and I've got 16 gigabytes of DDR4 in here running at 3200 megahertz. So it's not a super fancy PC, and actually when I picked this up about a year ago, it wasn't that expensive. I think I paid $230 for it, and I used it with the 4300G in the built-in graphics for a while. The first thing I was interested in was just seeing how this benchmarked against the 1650 low profile I also have. In the same machine, here we have 3 d Mark Night Raid. With the 6400, we got a total score of 27,833. Graphic score, 47,367. And with the GTX 1650, we got a total score of 26,553. Graphic score was 43,984. So the RX 6400 did beat out the 1650 by a little bit in this benchmark. And it's kind of the same thing across the board. Here we have Fire Strike, and the last one I ran was Time Spy. So just by a little bit, that 6400 is coming ahead, at least in synthetic benchmarks. And I will have a head-to-head -head comparison coming up on the channel, so if you're interested in seeing that, make sure you hit the subscribe button and turn notifications on. But now I want to move over to some gameplay with this RX 6400 in this lower NPC. And the first one I wanted to test was Elden Ring. And here it is at 1080p. I did have to drop this down to low settings, but we're getting a really steady 60 out of it. Got a fluctuation every once in a while, but that's something you would probably never notice. So yeah, I mean, on a budget machine like this, Elden Ring is playable at 1080p low. I figured I'd go ahead and test CSGO, and with this we got an average of 151 FPS. Not bad at all, and this would probably pair up really nicely with a 120 or 144 Hz monitor. This little setup handled The Witcher 3 really well. Here it is at 1080p, high settings, we got an average of 82 FPS. Really good performance for this little card. I wanted to go back to God of War because I know the CPU in that higher end machine was definitely helping it out, and as you can see, it really was. We're getting an average of 52 FPS with the same exact settings, but we've got a much lower end CPU. And the final thing I wanted to test, at least for this video, was one of my all-time favorite games at 4K Ultra Settings. This is the original Skyrim, 
and it's really trying its hardest, but I do think I'll need to drop this down to high to get a nice steady 60 out of it. But here it is at Ultra 4K, really not that bad. So yeah, really enjoying this little card, and I got a couple more videos coming up. We'll definitely do a super small form factor build with this, and I also want to get some emulation out of the way. Now when it comes to emulation, CPU is number one, but when it's time to upscale, the GPU plays a very important part, and I think we'll be able to get some of the higher end emulators at 4K relatively easy with this card. So if you're interested in seeing any of those videos, make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn notifications on. They'll be coming up in the next few days. But yeah, I really do like the RX 6400. I know some people were complaining about the $150 price tag, but I guess they just don't remember the last two years in the GPU market being so messed up. And even now today, for a low-profile 1650, it's around $300 to $350. So if you're looking for a small form factor single-slot card, I do think that this is a really good option. If you're interested in learning more, I will leave a couple links in the description, but I got a lot more coming with the RX 6400, so stay tuned to the channel. If you have any questions or requests, let me know in the comments below, but like always, thanks for watching.